Good morning, Sheila. You're, you're the first. Hello, Debbie. Sorry if anybody was trying to get in just now and we weren't here. Um, we're just a little bit later than usual starting. Sorry about that. You can come and say hello. I'll stand back. We've got our visiting speaker today. Sorry, we're having to keep the two meter distance. Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing okay. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to have a wee look at the messages that are coming on. Hi, Sheila. How are you? I'm not too far away from you this morning. I could actually probably go out the window and give you a wee wave. Hope you're doing okay. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Let's see who else is popping up. Oh, morning, Shaz. Hope you enjoyed your walk in CD yesterday and aren't too exhausted to listen. I might exhaust you even more once I finish talking. See who else we've got coming up here. Or I'll just hand it back to Chris. <laughs> Here's Chris. Right, isn't it great to have Sarah Lee with us this morning? And uh, sorry if you were trying to um, join the service and we weren't here a few minutes ago. Hopefully everybody's managed to get in now and others will join us. I think we've got 12 households watching at the moment. Hopefully that will go up a wee bit. Um, lovely to see you all. And I'm just going to, in a moment, hand over to Alison, who is going to um, play our, our first worship. And what we're going to do this morning is we're going to have two songs of worship, one after the other, before we go into prayer together. So um, we're going to hand over, first of all, to Ernie, who is going to um, welcome us and uh, say we opening prayer. Then we'll have two songs of worship. Okay. <laughs> Good morning everyone. I was wondering today what's so special about August the 30th. Well it is the 243rd day of the year which means we have 123 days left till the end <laughs> of 2020. It's also a Sunday, it's a bank holiday but what's so special about today for us Christians is that every day is special because we have the Lord Jesus alongside us whatever we have to face in life. Whatever we have to go through, we have a friend who's with us to help us and to guide us and to be with us. Listen to these words from Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise this morning that all of us who know you know that each day is special with you. We know, Lord, that whatever we have to face, whatever we have to go through in life, that you're right there beside us to help us, to guide us and to mould us. And Lord, we thank you that you know our ways, that you care about our ways. We would ask that you help us make our ways as your ways. Lord, that we hear you this morning clear. Lord, that you'll open our hearts and our minds to everything you have to say. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful, unending love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient today. From every nation, all our creation, bow before the ancient today. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. You will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away for ancient days. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient today. From every nation, all our creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. You will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, sing unto the ancient days. For none can compare to your matchless work, sing unto the ancient days. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth, sing unto the ancient days. For none can compare to your matchless work. Sing unto the ancient of days. Blessing and honor, blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all our creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. You will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. O ancient of days. O ancient of days. Thank you, Ernie. Shall we pray? Father God, as we reach the end of another month, we remember that you are our eternal creator God. And we're reassured by the seasons, giving us predictability, even as we continue through the uncharted territory of this pandemic. We're reminded of the words of the hymn writer, As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Help us, O Lord, to remain faithful to you, faithful in trusting you and your word, and faithful in our witness to others. We repent, Lord, for those times we have fallen short of your call, and we thank you for your grace compassion and merciful forgiveness. Father, this week we've been reminded of the amazing dream that you gave to Martin Luther King Jr. The dream of a world free from oppression and injustice. But Lord, as we look around this world, we still see so much inequality and prejudice. Forgive us, Lord, our acceptance and complacency, whether conscious or unconscious, and help us, Lord, to love as you loved, to reach out to others with your love and compassion. We pray, Father God, for our community. We give thanks for our new recreation ground at Riverside and for this successful outcome of months of hard work and fundraising. We pray that when this new facility opens, it will provide a safe place of fun and play. Thank you, Father God, that we live in a community with the capacity to achieve such projects and to plan with hope for the future. Father, we continue to pray for our community, 
our region and nation as we navigate this ongoing pandemic and as people fear a second wave. We pray for all in authority that they would have the wisdom necessary to lead us through these difficult times and the humility to recognise and respond appropriately to people's heartfelt needs, fears and concerns. We pray for those in the front line, Lord, for health workers and other key workers who still feel vulnerable. We pray especially for those working in schools and feeling concerned about the practicalities and implications of this. We pray for the children of this community and we pray for their families and for those who have lost their income or are managing on reduced income or who see little prospect of a return to employment. We pray for our local councillors and for the Scottish and UK governments, Lord, that they would achieve the right balance of protecting the vulnerable and maintaining a functioning and effective economy. And Father God, we pray for the right outcome from continuing talks on Brexit, that the needs of our whole population will be properly understood and met. Father God, these prayers from our hearts highlight the needs of a broken world which in so many ways has lost sight of your will and purpose and chosen to go its own way. Father, as you hear our prayers and look upon these things, we pray that you would equip us, your disciples, to make a difference, to be salt and light to our community, to reach out with compassion and proclaim the good news of your gospel to a broken world, pouring out Christ-like love for one another, protecting the vulnerable, helping the hurting, and bringing hope to those in need of encouragement. We bring you our praise and our thanks, even in these difficult times, and we worship you, our sovereign Lord and God, trusting in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient today. From every nation, all our creation.
everyone. Sorry about my blunder then, I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> and then you maybe saw me mouthing something it's Sarah really who without permission took a photograph of us. <laughs> anyway, we're going to hand over to Sarah Lee who's going to speak today and I can tell you in advance that the Candy Canes, the new girl band, are singing a beautiful song. <laughs> lovely, lovely harmony. So welcome Sarah Lee. <laughs> Candy canes. Yeah. Morning, everyone. Hope you're okay. I'm a bit like a naughty child being in here this morning, I think. I've changed the order a wee bit. <laughs> I've then sat there taking photographs, but I just thought they've done such a good job for weeks and weeks. Wouldn't it be nice to send them some photos of how good it all looks? Anyway, morning. It's really, really good to be with you this morning. Gosh, how our Sunday mornings have changed. Our whole routines have went kind of haywire, haven't they? Normally, on a Sunday morning these days, I am in my PJs, um, Pastor Chris's voice is booming out of my iPhone and simultaneously I'm cooking our Sunday brunch. <laughs> so I'll get all that ready, just as we finish our service it's prepared, my mum switches round to the garden and the girls and I sit down with my mum, even if he's not working, which he is this morning, and we enjoy our Sunday brunch together. So it's bizarre because normally we would be getting into our wee cosy room in the church room and we'd be able to give each other hugs and, and say good morning and catch up and everyone. However, this is a really good opportunity to tell my family Sunday brunch is not happening at the time that it normally would this week. So sorry about that. Anyway, how have things changed in your routine? We've now got this fantastically extended online church family. Some of you have never even met face to face. But isn't it good to be able to wish each other good morning and catch up a wee bit with each other on the messages at the bottom of the screen? As I was looking through some of the chats last week, it got me thinking to something Pastor Chris had spoken about several weeks ago when he asked if anyone would like to write and share a 500 word testimony. I'm not sure if any of you have responded to that or perhaps if any of you have ever shared a testimony before. But what is a testimony and why is it so important for us to share it? I'm going to ask Alison to do a wee reading from John 4 for you now. It's John 4 verses 7 to 29. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You're a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, 
You have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as he did also his sons and livestock? And Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks water will never be thirsty, will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I won't be thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you've had five husbands and the man you have now is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. So the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming, and has now come, when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or, why are you talking with her? Then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? Then on to verses 39 to 42. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the saviour of the world. Thank you, Alison. So our testimonies can be powerful. When I first started coming to church, I loved hearing people's testimonies. The word testimony is used to describe the story of the ways God has worked in our lives and how we've grown since we first accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. For me, it was really interesting to hear other people's stories. But why should we share our story with others? I remember being really quite nervous the first time I shared a bit of mine. What happens if my story's not interesting enough? What if I blab on too much? And who's really going to want to hear what I have to say? This morning I'm going to share some important reasons as to why your story is important and also share a bit of mine at the same time. So my first point is this, people love to hear stories. A testimony is exactly that, it's a story We all love a story. We go to the cinema, we watch television, we read books. Also, we can hear great stories. Stories can give us experiences to emulate. They can show us people to relate to and root for. They can also give us the opportunity to see things from another's point of view. My story began at a really early age. I was probably about three years old when I began to speak to my special friend. One day, I was heading into a lift in Lewis's in Glasgow. This lift had huge big iron shutters and there was a man there operating it, taking us to whatever floor we desired. I entered that lift along with my mum and my great-gran. Now, to paint the picture a wee bit here, my gran was quite the lady. She went out with her hat on, she had her gloves and everything was just so. So, those were also the days where children were seen and not heard. Some of you might find this very difficult to believe. 
but I was anything but a quiet child. So as the operator began to close the doors, I immediately yelled, oh, I can't speak, immediately yelled for him to stop and reopen the doors because he had closed Jesus out. Now as an adult, I firmly believe that my childlike faith allowed me to indeed have that friend Jesus with me. My great gran, however, had other ideas. She immediately informed my mum that there was something not right with me and she should take me to the doctor. That's the start of my story, my testimony. My second point is this, it removes fear and gives courage. In speaking about what God has done in my life, I'm also remembering all of God's goodness. When I recount what he's done in the past, it gives me even more faith and courage for present living. I've had so many points in my life when I wondered why I was there and what reason was there for me doing what I was doing. We had a family caravan at Auchinleary many years ago and we would congregate there for the summer holidays. One year I took a job at the Cali Palace Hotel as a waitress. This particular morning I was doing, doing the dreaded task of making Melba toast. I hated making Melba toast. A man walked past and helped himself to several pieces that I had created for the breakfast table. I was furious and I asked one of the other waitresses, who is he? Oh, him, she replied. That's the Romeo of Gatehouse. I took a look back and I said, well, if that's all Gatehouse has to offer, I'll not be sticking around for long. However, God had other ideas. That Romeo has been my husband for almost 22 years and we have two daughters together. So my third point, it keeps it alive. The more you share your testimony, the more you remember his good work within your life. When things are not going so well in your life, it can be, you can become despondent. We can question if God is listening to us, where he is in our struggles. It's good for us to recall our own experiences of God's work as a reminder that he never forsakes us. That even when we feel alone, he has us. Nothing is too big for him. We just need to remember that. Trust and hand it over. COVID-19 has been a crazy time for each and every one of us. Some people have suffered great loss both personally and financially. We've had to endure new rules and regulations, some of which has involved us being apart from family and friends. Life, as we know it, was shook to the core and we have had to adjust to being socially distant. But we're here to tell the story. Just as some of you who are listening to us have told our ex your experiences of war, we will speak of the COVID days. The days where we were required to wear masks and stay two metres apart when hugs could not be given out without out with our bubbles, and when you really hoped that you didn't have a sudden bowel issue as toilet roll became so hard to get it was worth its weight in gold. This too will be part of our story. The time where we trusted in God came together however we could in prayer and worship and gave thanks for being able to take a once a day walk. A piece of scripture that our holiday club members learned a couple of years back tells us this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. That comes from Proverbs 3 verse 5. The other point that I'd like to make is the help that you can give to others with your story. Stories about how God has worked in your life can help to encourage other people who may be going through some, something similar. They could see a new hope, feel a connection. Then you're able to help them carry their baggage because you have already walked through a similar problem. I am so fortunate to have a job that I firmly believe I am meant to be doing. I studied performing arts. I then became a police officer. And after having my oldest daughter left that and for a period of time did beauty therapy. I then became a family support worker helping the families of those affected by drug and alcohol abuse. Just at the point where I had decided to study and become a teacher, 
I ended up in a completely different course due to a mix up with my application form and instead completed my degree in community education and development. Every single thing I have done up to this point is experience God is using within the job I do at TGB Gatehouse. God has a plan, not just in my life, but in your life too. There are times when it's not clear for us to see, but we can speak about our trust in God through the works he has done for us up to this point within our lives. Psalm 71, 15 to 18 tells us, my, world, word, my mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long. Though I know not how to relate them all, I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvellous deeds. Even when I am old and grey, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty act to all who are to come. Wherever you are in your Christian journey, remember this. You have no idea what impact your story could have on another person's life. Don't be afraid of sharing your story with others. It doesn't need to be all singing and all dancing to have an impact. As it's family day service today, as Alison said, um, I have roped my girls into joining me and singing one of my favourite worship songs, Great Are You Lord. I'm going to apologise in advance because there was nothing fancy about the recording of this and I'm no singer. Um, the girls are very good though. Um, but we just whacked it together at TGB the other day with the help of an iPhone. So I hope you enjoy this song. Mm. Great. 
John 1, verses 2 to 3. This life was revealed to us and we have seen it and testify about it. We declare to you this eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard we declare to you so that you too can have fellowship with us. Now this fellowship of ours is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus, the Messiah. Let's pray. Lord, we come together to praise with you with one voice. We are all different, but we have the same maker. We have unique stories, but the same author. And we give thanks that we have testimonies of transformed lives, answered prayers and changed perspectives. Each of us has countless stories to tell of your goodness within our lives. Give us the courage to share these stories, to build our fellowship, to spur each other on and grow in faith individually and as a community. Father, we give thanks for all you have done and continue to do within each and every one of us. And we pray that you will use us to help others as we head off in our various paths this week. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you.
hasn't that been a great morning thank you sarah lee for for that that has i think been a big encouragement not only for myself but for everybody else and i see some lovely comments coming up about your song with your girls the uh, what did you call them the can the candy canes the candy canes uh, yeah uh, so. I, I guess that's uh, one up on the sugar babes, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but that that song we've just been sung, singing, um, that really has to be our prayer, doesn't it? For not only for our church, but for the churches across this nation. In fact, the churches across the world at this time, that God through His Holy Spirit would ch set His church on fire. That's us, our the people. God's people, that he would set us on fire with his Holy Spirit within us, that we would win this nation back, that we would see the atmosphere of this whole nation changed, starting here in our own community. And we really do pray that through us he will build his kingdom here. Let that be our prayer this morning. Shall we just join together in the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, next week is our Communion Sunday, so please remember to have the um, some bread and some wine or some juice, if you prefer, ready for that next Sunday morning and to join with us. Um, Malcolm is going to be speaking to us about Communion next week and I really look forward to that. Also on Saturday is our prayer breakfast by Zoom and uh, Ernie will be leading that for us. If you have any prayer updates, any um, prayer requests, please let me have them by five o'clock Friday and I will get them included in what we circulate um, for the prayer breakfast and we will circulate a, um, a link to the Zoom for Saturday morning. Look forward to seeing as many of you as possible then. For now, bye bye. <laughs> say some goodbyes and things. <laughs> I'm going to stand back. I just haven't looked. Hi Kevin and Shaz and everyone else. <laughs> Do your talkie bits. Hi. <laughs> Do the talkie bits. Yeah, because I'm such a quiet person as I spoke about. Hi Shaz, thanks very much. All these wee comments pop up and it's really nice to be able to like catch up with the people we've not seen for ages. Oh, hi Peggy, I saw that you'd popped on as well. It was nice to see your name come up again. I'm just going to have a look and see who else is. I don't think it's floating up for me just now, so I'm just going to have to just talk normally. They're not moving these comments, <laughs> so I can't actually see who's, um, who's popping up or not. But anyway, good morning to everybody. Thank you so much for um, popping on and being with us this morning. It's been so nice to be able to catch up with you all. I am literally a bouncy, dancy worship person, so when it's on, it's hard for me to contain myself, but isn't it going to be so good when we can get together and just sing and pray and worship again together in person? Have a great week, and I hope you have a blessed week, and your story is uh, one that you won't share. Feel encouraged and bring uh, your story to Pastor Chris. We 500 word test, only you can do it. See you later. Thank you, Sarah Lee. Bye-bye, everybody. See you next week. Bye for now.